Hey everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And during this video, we're going to talk a little bit about nuclear radiation, specifically alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, the most commonly discussed and earliest discovered forms of radiation. But before we get to that, let's define nuclear radiation. Now, nuclear radiation can be defined as the emission of elementary particles or energy that result as atoms decay. It's very often confused with nuclear fission. Now, during nuclear fission, a larger atomic nucleus is split into two smaller but substantially sized nuclei, like this example here, where uranium has broken down into barium and krypton. Now, that process in and of itself technically is not nuclear radiation, although nuclear radiation often accompanies these kinds of processes. But we're not going to be discussing these today. Today we're going to talk just about the process of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. These forms of radiation were discovered right around the turn of the 20th century. Ernest Rutherford, a noted physicist and a man who seemed to have trouble not making incredible discoveries in his labs, discovered both alpha particles, which were relatively large, positively charged particles, and beta radiation, which consisted of lighter, negatively charged particles. And the third type of radiation we'll discuss today was disco uh, discovered by a French physicist by the name of Paul Viard. And Viard discovered gamma rays, which are essentially massless and carry no charge at all. They're basically very, very high energy light. Now let's stop and think a little bit about atoms and the structures of their nuclei and how these nuclei can create this kinds of radiation. Let's begin our discussion about alpha, beta, and gamma radiation by thinking about subatomic particles. Now we all know the nuclei of atoms contain neutrons and protons, but what you might not have thought about yet is that they can also absorb and release electrons and even photons. And actually, there are many more particles that can participate in radiation, but we're going to deal with just these four since we're getting an introductory lecture here. So let's think about all four of these in terms of their charge and their mass. Neutrons, of course, are neutral with a charge of zero. Protons, we know, have a charge of plus one. Electrons of minus one. And photons, we can think of as having no charge at all. Neutrons have a mass of 1.008701 atomic mass units. And protons are not far behind at 1.007316 atomic mass units. But electrons, well, they're so much less massive than protons and neutrons that we typically don't think of them as having mass. When we calculate the mass of an atom, we usually just neglect electrons altogether. And photons, well, photons we think of as being essentially massless because they're so very, very tiny. Now, look at this table carefully and you'll start to see some relationships here, right? It kind of seems like a proton plus an electron equals a neutron in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Right? A proton has a plus one charge and an electron a minus one charge. So if you could mix the two together, you'd get a charge of zero, just like a neutron has. And although it's not a perfect addition due to something we, we actually understand and call the mass defect, a proton plus an electron from a mass perspective does roughly add up to the mass of a neutron. So we're going to use these relationships to try to understand nuclear radiation here very, very soon. But enough about subatomic particles. We're here to talk about how atoms behave. So let's think about an atom of uranium. An atom of uranium will have a nucleus with an electron cloud. But again, let's ignore the electron cloud because we're talking about nuclear chemistry here. We want to talk about the uranium nucleus. A uranium nucleus contains 238 nucleons, or neutrons and protons put together, and 92 protons themselves. This means it has an atomic mass of 238 and an atomic number of 92. It's this uranium nucleus that's going to start our discussion about the concept of nuclear radiation and help us to distinguish between and among alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Let's start working on that right now. First, we're going to talk about alpha radiation. So let's think about that uranium-238 once more. Remember, the atomic mass, 238, tells us the total number of protons and neutrons, and its atomic number, 92, tells us the total number 
of protons. I'm going to make a duplicate of this nucleus, and now it's going to undergo radioactive decay. This is an alpha decay. Notice what's come out of my nucleus. I've lost two protons and two neutrons. That means I've essentially lost a helium nucleus. Now, look closely at the atomic numbers and atomic masses of all of the parties that are involved here. Notice that the atomic number of uranium-92 is equal to the sum of the two products, right? thorium and an alpha particle. Notice the atomic masses as well add up. right? So charge is balanced and mass is balanced as well. So in this case, I've lost a helium nucleus. That's four total nucleons and two protons, meaning I have a very massive, positively charged particle being irradiated from that nucleus. And it's giving me a new atom, a thorium-234, to work with for the next step in my radioactive decay. The next step in our process is beta radiation. Now, let's think about thorium-234 once more. Its ratio of protons to neutrons has changed as a result of the emission of an alpha particle, and thorium will seek out to fix that. In order to do that, it has to get more protons per neutron. Now, how is that possible? Well, think again about that equation that we derived earlier, in which a proton plus an electron essentially equal a neutron. Well, that means that thorium could actually convert one of its neutrons into a proton if it releases a high energy electron known as a beta particle. Now look carefully at our equation here. Our beta particle has essentially no mass and a negative charge, and therefore we create a new element called protactinum. This is the second step in the decay of uranium. A thorium nucleus loses a beta particle in an attempt to recover the neutron to proton ratio that it once enjoyed when it was uranium-238. So in this case we've lost a much less massive and negatively charged type of radiation as our nucleus continues to decay. Now let's talk about gamma radiation and to do that I'm going to go back to our original nucleus the uranium-238. You see, when uranium-238 undergoes an alpha decay, it doesn't just lose an alpha particle, it loses something else. So let's think about it once more. Uranium-238 loses a helium nucleus or an alpha particle to create a massive positively charged radiation, and that creates thorium-234. But that thorium-234 isn't totally happy yet. Just like the electrons in a cloud around an atom like to relax to find a ground state, so do the nucleons, those protons and neutrons, within that thorium atom want to relax to find their ground state. And right now they're not in it. So as they rearrange to find that ground state, they release a certain amount of energy. And the amount of energy that they release is actually quite tremendous for a single atom. In this case, they release so much energy that a photon is released of such high energy that we call it gamma radiation. This is far, far beyond the ultraviolet region. These are extremely high energy photons and they get their very own designation. We call them gamma rays. Now it's time to summarize our discussion of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. We discussed alpha radiation, in which a relatively large nucleus ejects a helium-4 nucleus. This helium-4 nucleus consists of two protons and two neutrons, and is therefore very massive and positively charged. Then we discussed beta radiation, and we discussed how sometimes certain nuclei don't have the optimal neutron-to-proton ratio, and try to achieve that by converting a neutron into a proton. And we saw how this can only happen when an electron is ejected from the nucleus, creating a beta particle, a much less massive and negatively charged type of radiation compared to alpha particles. And finally, we discussed gamma radiation, which typically accompanies one of these other two forms. And we talked about how during gamma radiation, some type of change in the nucleus 
leads to a situation where that new nucleus has to rearrange its neutrons and protons to find a lower energy state. And we saw how this new lower energy state results in the ejection of a very high energy gamma particle, a high energy form of light. These are the three principal types of nuclear radiation that you'll encounter during your chemistry course. I hope this lecture has been helpful and I hope you come back for more. But for now, we're done. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next video.